Hi, welcome to episode seven. This was going to be part of episode six, but I've got about half an hour of making inner stems, so I figured I'd break that into a standalone episode. So here it is. The last thing we want to do to make the strong back ready to accept strips is make an inner stem. At the bow of the boat here, you've got to end it someplace. Um, and so if I lay a strip on this, I've designed the this line right here to be exactly where this strip will lay when it's laying fair and smooth on the side of the boat at a half inch thick. So the gap between this side and this side is a precise half inch right there. But that leaves this space. If I lay a strip on each side, there's a space between them. I don't necessarily want that space. I could conceivably have this stem taper down to a point, so I bevel that, and then I have something to lay those strips against as I'm laying them on the boat. And you know, I could shoot a staple in there or whatever as I'm building the boat. And so having sort of a landing spot for the strip is useful. Um, again, if we're looking at the bow of the boat and we have this, this gap here, it's really hard to clean out any glue in there, get fiberglass up in there. It's just a hard place to deal with. We're not going to be able to sand it. We're not going to be able to get fiberglass smoothly down in there. So I'd actually like to fill that in before I have to clean it out. And so the way I go about doing that is with an inner stem. And so what the inner stem is, is a piece of wood that's shaped to fit that gap. And so here I have a pattern. This fits right on to the end of the stem, um, precise match between this curve and that curve. And so this is a pattern for my inner stem. And if you look at this, this, this leading edge here is where it comes to a perfect point. So again, my two strips coming to, together here will reach out and they'll, they end up somewhere out here that's this point right here. So if I cut this into a triangle section, I'll have something that fills that gap up. I want something that's going to be reasonably strong, lightweight, easy to work with, and shape that to make this sort of gap filling piece in there. And when it comes time to fiberglass that, we will have a half inch wide seam there. We can maybe put a fillet in there. We can actually reach into something that's a half inch wide. So the inner stem is filling in that gap, creating a landing spot for the strips coming down on either side. So now I have a nice half inch thick piece of uh, Sitka spruce, close enough. Um, nice straight grain on it, a little bit of a knot right in here, but for our purposes, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, what I want to do is get a nice stem out of here. So using the wood efficiently, I'm going to do something like that. The grain is running this way, and so that's parallel to the longest axis of this piece. So I'm going to end up cutting like this. Cut it around here, and so I'm just going to cut the outer edge first. And we'll find something similar for the inner stem. So I'm just again going to cut out around this line here and that line there. I'm going to leave it attached at this point so I have something to hold on to it. There's two keys to accurate cuts when you're cutting out a pattern. A sharp blade and an easy to follow line. First cut I'll make is just to get the pieces free of the bigger board. Again, rule one of uh, doing a nice job shaping wood is a sharp blade. This Lee Nielsen 
plane has seen a little action, but it's not in too bad shape. We'll give it a quick touch up. So I'm just bringing it down until I feel a little burr on the back side. Switch to a finer stone. Seems pretty sharp. I want to make that triangle shape. So I'm looking to hit the center of this. And so I'm going to come down from this bevel line. That's this line here. Down to the half halfway line. And on the other side, just use the other side of this pattern, line it up with the edge. And like that. Where this, I have it rounded over, imagine this just continuing out that way. Likewise, up here, this continues out. Something like that. Tapers off to nothing. I want to take it down, and we're trying to make a half inch wide V like that. So, in order to see where I'm going, where I've been, I'm just going to do this. And now, as I plane away, those lines disappear. And I want to end up hitting this edge here at the same time I hit this line there. It's going to take a little bit of estimating what that angle is and then watch my progress as I go. And I'm about halfway back here, so I want to be about halfway down here. off that blade is cutting a little aggressive. I start by just making straight cuts. I'm not trying to follow that curve right away. What people tend to do when they're doing this is they say I'm aiming for that line and I'm aiming for that line. So they'll cheat in on it. So when they're trying on this side, they'll bevel this way. When they're on this side, they'll bevel this way. And so they'll push themselves back. And what, instead of ending up with a straight plane down here, you end up with a crown. And we want straight. Remember, we're going to be laying a strip against that. And so we'd like a perfect fit of the strip against that face. So any crowning just makes it so we won't have a nice tight glue joint there. You can clamp this piece down, make it easier to hold. So I'm almost down to this line. And I'm almost up to this line. So it looks like I'm on a good angle. And I've just made it fairly straight going from one end to the other. Looks like I need a little bit more work at this end here. So a little bit more at this end. A little less at that end. So we'll concentrate down here. You can see that here too. It's a little bit narrower here than it is there. to this line just about and similarly just about to that line. So now I'll start to work on my curve. So I want to sort of do the same thing in a straight shot here. I'm not trying to wrap the plane around that curve yet. I'm just trying to make some flat facets. 
bringing it from this point down to that point. So now I have that section. I can get rid of this little hump right in there. Here obviously it's much steeper. We're going to be almost to the 45. So I've got that section good. Now we'll blend this into that. Hitting the line down there and got that blended in. So up here, similar. Another key to getting good work is hold the material in a position where it's comfortable for you to work on it. If I'm having to do this, that's uncomfortable, I'm not going to do good work. It's hard for me to hold it here and get this section, and so, and this wasn't, I wasn't getting a good grip on it, I could reclamp it down, make it easier to hold, and now work on that little section in there. There's no law saying you need to push the plane all the time. You can pull it. Here, when I'm pushing it, I'm getting tear out. Come in with the grain. Get a smoother cut. This doesn't really matter. It's all going to be buried in the boat. But, you know, practice is good. So now I've got one side down, I want to do the other side. Again, this is going to taper off like that. This is going to taper off like that. Make my little guidelines here to see where I'm at. Little witness lines. mistake people often make with a block plane is they don't feel it's cutting so they end up cranking the blade forward eventually they get to the point where there's not enough room for the shaving to get out this will go through for a while but then it starts to get jammed up in there and if it, the more it gets jammed up, the harder it is to push the next shaving through. So it can, it can be a very fine distinction between where a shaving goes through and where one gets jammed up. You really want to set it pretty fine so it's not taking too deep a cut. As I'm pushing this, i got to really work at it to push it along. If I crank the blade back, I 
all of a sudden it's much easier. Usually what's happening when people are cranking that blade forward is their plane's just dull and they don't think it's cutting because they think it's not cutting because the blade's not far enough out when it really is just dull. And so if you're finding you need to crank it out to make it cut, chances are you just need to stop and sharpen a little bit. Makes a big difference. So I cranked it back and now it's not cutting at all, so I'll go a quarter turn. It's starting to get shavings, so I'll go another quarter turn. That's really nice. Nice fine shavings, it's easy to push. Alright, now we'll work on these top and bottom bevels a little bit. First straighten that out. Getting a uh, bevel on the top edge there. I still show the pencil line there so I can make that a little bit narrower. To the point where it's almost gone. Now on the bottom edge. I place this piece so it's well supported under the area I'm working by the bench. If it hangs out the end and you go to push on it, it'll fold away and tend to flutter and chatter a little bit. pretty good. Sharp edge on it. You could use a little bit more. Looks good at that side. Up there. I 
There we go. I've left the line a little bit, but some places it's obscured. I can just take my pattern, reestablish that line. And I'll bring that back to the bandsaw and cut it. Now we'll do the same operation with the stern inner stem. Make sure you've got a good bright line to follow there. And line on both sides. Got a center line there, high precision. So we're going from a line here to a line down there. Get our witness lines back in there. And again, it's easy to want to cheat this down. You're getting bored and you want to get right down to the line, so you bevel it down here to get to the center line and bevel it down this way to get back to this bevel line there and end up with it crowned. We don't want it crowned, we want it perfectly flat. So I'm closer up here than I am down here, so I'm going to angle my plane slightly more this way and work it down until I get it a flat surface all the way across. All right, so I've established the primary bevel. Got a little bit up at this end, a little flatter. Like on the bow, we're going to run that forward from that curved line just to make sure we've got our bevel there. So we've established the bevel there. Now we can start to blend it together. Once we've got one side done, flip it over to the other side.
just cleaning up this inner edge a little bit. This will be the only part that would conceivably be visible from the boat, obviously way up in the ends of the boat. <laughs> Now back at the bow of the boat, this is where the inner stem is going to fit. This piece gets fit right in there. Some of you may know enough about the process to be thinking ahead and wondering. The hull and the deck are both going to be attached to this. So I'm going to end up stripping the hull first, the lower half, and then start on stripping the deck, but I'll cut this off before I have to take the deck off. Up at the top here, we have this bevel that was thrown in there, and when I was doing that um, shaping of the inner stem, I continued those lines out here, and I have center line here. I want to do that to this too, on both sides, so the strips when they come in, can lay down and hit on hit this inner stem. And as you see, the, the shape of the boat starts to round over very quickly after it gets back from the bow. And so my bevel here rolls quite quickly from almost a 45 to almost flat. Conceivably, I could have continued this inner stem way back here, but I'd end up with the very delicate little piece here with cross grain it would break off very easily um, so this way I, I end it before it gets too thin and delicate just shape the, the form a little bit so it's not in the way so now the strips will lay down on that and I'll go do the same thing on the stern well that was a lot of time spent on two little bits of wood thanks for sticking with me if you made it this far, you should give me an automatic thumbs up for wasting 30 minutes of your life. Please ask questions if anything was unclear. With the inner stems done, the forms are just about ready to accept strips. While the strips are all cut, I'm not quite yet ready to use them. I first need to figure out my stripping pattern and exactly how I want to lay out the material on the kayak. So the next episode will involve me staring at wood as I try to figure out what would look good. If that sounds exciting to you, you should subscribe to my channel. There's more like this coming. Until then, thanks for watching and happy paddling.